Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're building one of these, a camber gauge. Let's get started. You might be aware that I'm working on this 1967 Dodge Dart and I've changed the front suspension. The next thing that really needs to happen is I need to align this. Alignment on any vehicle really is three components on a wheel. There's the caster, the camber, and the toe. If you imagine a straight line down through the center of the wheel here, the caster is that is the angle this direction. That angle has an effect on the ball joints. So if the center line is really like this, instead of straight up and down, you've got one ball joint here and the other one down here at an angle. When this moves up and down, these are not aligned, so it puts torque force on those ball joints. You really want that to be straight up and down. The second thing that you need to worry about is the camber. The camber is, as you look at this wheel, the top of it moving in and out. So it's this motion here. The next thing after that is the toe, and that is the front of it in or out. So it's this motion of the tire. Since I've changed all of the suspension, the alignment on this is going to be really, really far off. If I try to drive it, it's probably going to go all over the road. I know the toe is really bad. What I'm going to try to do is adjust both the camber and the toe manually with tools here in the garage. Some of them will, I'll make and then we'll take it over to the alignment shop, have them check it, and see how far off we are. The first step we need to do is we need to build a tool that allows us to measure the camber on this vehicle. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So the theory behind the camber gauge we're going to build is this. We're going to assume that the wheel is not bent and that it is flat against the rotor. So that's what we're going to measure off of. We know that this part of the rim then should be true. If we measure from here to here through the center line, like this, any angle this direction or this direction will be the camber. Assuming that we have this sitting on flat ground, this angle we could do by getting If we assume the vehicle is sitting on flat ground, if we have two things, one that is straight up and down, and then another one that connects these two points and it's on some sort of a pivot down here, the angle between those two will actually give us that camber angle. So we're going to build something that basically has some sort of a scissor action, a pivot down here with two legs, one that will have this level on it, you get it level. The other leg will touch here and here, and the angle between the two will then be our camber. Should be quite simple to build. I'm going to build it specific for this wheel. So I'm going to have it touch here and here on this rim. There's no reason you couldn't build one of these to fit multiple different sizes of rims. So if you're building one of these, keep in mind, uh, the vehicles that you're going to be testing. So here's the general plan and I think this is all the material we need to do it. I picked these up at the local hardware store, it's just some bulk aluminum. This is a uh, 16th inch, it's half by three quarter and this is, looks like it's a one inch square tube. The exact dimensions don't really matter picked up a little torpedo level and then some 1024 machine screws. So the general idea is we'll get this so that it's level. And then this will pivot and this angle here will be our camber angle. Thank you. 
Well, I forgot to hit the record button, but I've got holes here, there, there, and then cross there. Just need to deburr this. We'll use that as the alignment mark. Here's our indicator. And we'll put a scale up here on this. I looked at the service manual and really half a degree is all we need. But before we put that mark in, I need to know where zero is. And before we can find out where zero is, we need to attach the level to here. For simplicity, I'm just going to epoxy it on. And now we wait. The zero point is when this edge is parallel to the back edge. So when the edge that moves is parallel here, the easiest way to find that is going to be to put it against another level. So we're touching here and here, just like we would a wheel, get this level and then move this till its level. At that point, the two will be parallel. There we go. Now that we have it zeroed, we know that this point right here on this main frame is the zero point. So I'm just going to mark that. Now I have a good zero. I'm going to put another dot there that will help me uh, to know that it's the zero. I could probably add some paint or something there make them a little bit more visible. But for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'll just use this punch, the zero. Not perfectly straight, but it should work. You can see here, it says camber left and right for a dart says half a degree preferred and a quarter degree which is interesting they're different on either side but so we need to mark half and then half of that will give us our quarter all right I apologize for those of you who dislike math but we're gonna go through this real quick so if this is our distance of our adjustable arm from the pivot to that end where our marks are. We want to do something like this. We know it's the right triangle. It says 0 0.5 degrees. We want to know how far that is. We need to know this. So for, to the pivot is 13 and a half. So this is 13.5 inches, so we know that the tangent of 0 0.5 is this value over 13.5. So we do the math with a calculator and we come up with 0 0.118 roughly. We know it's 118, so let's just do 118. 
you can see that's pretty small. Not terribly straight, but still should work. Take this and put a single dimple for each one of those. There we go. That's center. That's a half a degree that direction. That's a half a degree that direction. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.